Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, meditation and the Gondon, and I'd like to have your feedback on it, uh, just uh, the role it plays within the GD. Okay, well this is a funny one because most of the meditational exercises in the Golden Dawn are actually Indian. Uh, since the Golden Dawn is not a religious order, they brought in the uh, <coughs> the Indian aspects to it, and uh, as a result of that, they've um, they brought in like breathing, like uh, pranayama yoga breathing exercises and visualization exercises, as they did in Tattvas. And uh, the relationship really, they're trying to. There's very, very little to do with the actual uh, grade you're going through. Uh, what they've tried to do is go through the tattva stuff and look at the basic tattva uh, uh, on the bottom and just work, it work, work its way up, which really doesn't tell you too much if you're doing an order that's nothing to do with the tattvas. Uh, uh, you need something that you can use, uh, that you can build on, and you can strengthen. Uh, and you've got to bring all those characteristics together. And the Golden Door never really supplied that. The the uh, thinking mechanisms, <clears throat> the thinking mechanisms, uh, as far as it went at the time, was always based in theosophy. Uh, the the meditational exercise in theosophy, there was a few of them, but one of the major ones was Raja Yoga, which is based on Pendjali uh, Sutras. And Raja Yoga was a mental yoga, fo uh, focus yoga. And uh, what the, the uh, what Theosophy did was they just took the eyes out of it. They cherry picked aspects of Raja Yoga so it wouldn't be in the too hard basket. And then they decided that they wanted to um, use that. And uh, they developed it in different branches of it. And different people in the Theosophy uh, used it. And so that was the thinking of of the 1880s, 1890s, as far as the meditational structures went. And went back to always went back to theosophy, which Westcott and Mathers and other Golden Dawn people were, were steeped in, and uh, so you never stray far from that 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 uh, point of impetus. Do you have any idea where the? Uh, I mean, because when we talk about meditation, we're not just talking about uh, obviously the tattvas and the, I mean, Crawley and his AA obviously brought in a lot of these Eastern elements and things like that. But as far as the GD is concerned. Uh, like in regard to going down, for example, we have meditations one through five. They're not really meditations; they're more types of contemplations through various symbols. Do you know where those come from? Meditations one. Oh through yeah, five. that that all came through theosophy, from one way, shape, or form. There's no doubt about that. Uh, that was that was all the, the original fount of knowledge, and from that they divvied their own uh, their own ideas. Uh, the for a start, you had the yogic breathing exercises. Fourfold breath. Well, in, uh, there was actually two phases of that. <clears throat> the first phase was you hold your nostril and you do pranayama, turn of breathing in, out, hold. And the other one was when you looked at the energy forms, which is what they did at Furry Ra. They, they did a uh, you would you would look at the five different energy levels in the body, and you would go from um, head to nose and to chest, and you would you would virtually fill the body up. The body was like a a holographic component, you'd fill it up with energy starting from the top in four different layers. Well, that was another level that they used. They used these two side by side. And uh, the fourfold, when they talk about the fourfold breathing, uh, one of the things they taught at Fororo was that. And also, you went in uh, the original Golden Dawn papers, you got them holding their nostrils. Well, that's that's okay. That's good to start the ritual with. But what the hell do you do with it uh, as uh, incremental steps in 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 achieving what you want because in yoga when you do yogic breathing there's a whole myriad of uh, background context that you use so that you can you can work through uh, yeah, the context is not in the golden dawn you've got mudras you've got sutras you've got a, a whole philosophy that you use is not used in the golden dawn itself uh, and so really you've, they've cherry picked it and just dumped it uh, I've uh, I've really thought <clears throat> that long and hard over this over the years and uh, and I've come to the conclusion that every, no matter what you do, as far as meditation and golden dawn, it's going to be subjective from the viewer's experience. Uh, okay, I'll give you one good example here. Um, you and I are both martial artists, so we see things when we hold a sword or a wand, we see it ten technically as a weapon. That's natural because we've both worked on those. But the thing about it is the internal system of that, which goes back to Taoism. Now, one of the interesting things I've thought about meditation with the Golden Dawn, I've always used, I've been a, a Tai Chi advocate, which I, I learnt in New Guinea and when I studied in Macau, 
And one of one of the one of the most interesting things about it was that uh, with Tai Chi, you've got the eight extra vessels, uh, which are separate from the acupuncture meridians going through the body. And when you hold a sword or a wand in ritual, these are activated. But the, uh, it, it's it's part of it. So uh, my my thought was coming from this particular viewpoint was that if you did something like a Tai Chi set, it would activate the what you would use within the ritual and doing this as the na- on a daily basis. But Tai Chi is not just doing an exercise, it's where you put your thought. That comes into will. You've got to put your thought on the Tandian, which is about two and a half inches below the navel and in. And there are two other lesser lesser uh, areas of the Tandian as well. And it's really the sacral chakra. Then you've got another one in the, in the abdominal chakra. And you've got another one in the, you know, uh, a little bit further <coughs> in, in the uh, third eye. So you've got these different areas as it goes and depending on the teacher who, who will teach you this but the main focus in the tending is the center of gravity which is about two and a half inches below the navel on the old imperial measurement and if you concentrate on that and you use a sword or a wand or something like that that will help you focus on what you're doing and link in it will be incremental in what you do and you can't always use a sword uh, you can use a sword or a wand but then you've got a cup and you've got a disc if you want to use the elemental weapons and the simple a simple way of, uh, of of teaching use on that using the using the focus point from the point below the navel is to just simply do circles uh, in, in a spiral because that will um, that's neither active nor passive it, it's a combination of both practicing that uh, so th- th- there's a lot that you can do but it, it, again it comes back to individual interpretation and I think that Tai Chi using proper concentration uh, because you can do one without the other you see the body movements doesn't doesn't cut it that will help the golden dawn if your golden dawn work because it opens up the senses in the arms and the legs and it works the eight extra vessels so when you start fundamentally using that within ritual itself you um you start to open your senses of awareness even though tai chi's got nothing to do with the golden dawn but neither has the uh, individual breathing or, or the tapas but at least you're moving and you're doing something it's moving zen and that's what you do in ritual what you do in ritual is you, it has an eastern equivalent of moving zen and moving zen needs a focus point uh, the difference by doing the uh, the inner the inner chinese uh, mechanisms the inner chinese uh, things with this to help to help aid you is that it helps uh, helps focus it makes you more aware in ritual it makes you more aware when you go from point a to point b when you hold a diagram when you hold a sword when you hold up something a, a banner uh, all of these focus connect with tai chi there's no difference at all and that's just but that's just just one mechanism that i've used for 30 odd years but, See, uh, a, but, but i mean uh, for for a martial artist that kind of thing is obvious the way you can uh, sort of align perhaps body breathing uh, the state and how you move say chi or etheric uh, energy i mean the, these things for us there might be uh, we might take it for granted or it might be something that we can kind of bridge together but what do you what do you suggest for people who don't have martial arts training because we do know that in the gd there's never been uh, teaching say on asana and things like that in fact we, you've talked to me about uh, not crossing legs before how in varia they would you know uh, emphasize a sitting in a, in, a, in a straight back chair when meditating not crossing the legs not using these various postures that we'll see in more eastern systems and and even the breathing you often talk about keeping it simple so what do you suggest for people without the martial arts training as a as a point of focus to help bring that kind of state in ritual well things like yoga and all of that have their have their benefits i, I studied yoga in india but from for studied it for many years uh, afterwards and uh, while it opens up channels within us i still maintain that the easiest thing for a person to do of any age is do a tai chi set if you want to know which one to do you could pick one take it at random it don't really matter that much i use a one by chin man ching and uh, that which is part of the yang system but that that's just one it's just one aid i mean so someone could come along with another better idea and i'd say go for it but the difference is that i want to my thoughts were but being because you're moving you're moving without anything in your hand it's simple it's not really a martial art unless you understand the movements of the tai chi and apply them 
uh, even then you have your problems but essentially it, it's just a meditative exercise in china they do it all the time there's millions of them doing tai chi first thing in the morning as a health exercise and i think if you put your thought right and concentrate on the tendon and let the energy flow from the center of gravity out to the arm or the leg where you're going and just meditate on that that makes it incremental if you do it twice a day morning and night you can apply that principle also by taking a wand of the golden dawn or sword form or anything like that and you let the energy flow through the wand and you let the energy flow through the sword uh, when I was uh, first instructed uh, by Jack to use the sword and, and the wand he had his own ideas on how to apply them let the energy flow out they were exactly the same as what you did on Aikido there was no difference all that you did in some forms of Tai Chi put your energy there flush it through concentrate on that let the energy flow but the difference was that the Chinese systems and, and, and the Indian systems all had a point of origin. The energy had to come from somewhere to go to somewhere. And a lot of the things within the Fourier Royal people, they would teach you what the end point was. They would teach you part of the process, but not where it came from. And they would do terms and things of the middle pillar. The middle pillars are fine as an exercise. I do it generally most mornings myself, but it's not going to be incremental in helping you with ritual. The idea of the helping you of ritual is to move with harmony of what's around you, increase your sensory awareness, and build up your flow of energy within you so you can direct it. All of this comes within a Tai Chi set, and that's why I chose it. It's not the only answer. You know, someone could probably get the same out of yoga in some respects, but there's crossover points between it. But that would be the simplest thing I think that someone should use. And the old Taoist philosophy is not that really different from... Um, from aspects of the golden dawn so what you've got to do is come get these things in context compare them side by side uh, you don't have to do a tai chi set uh, in the golden dawn but you can do it every morning and you can practice with your elemental weapons holding something you do one and just hold say, it i was just going to yeah. say I mean, uh, part of the uh, i mean a big part of the uh, what we're talking about here would be also to understand what each weapon, what each implement actually uh, should do. Uh, a lot of people, I think, uh, limit the, to the functions of each weapon and tool, and, and to harmonize with it and to understand in ritual how it moves energy, uh, it might be difficult to do that if you have uh, the wrong um, the wrong functions put on the tool. Like, uh, how can I explain this? I mean, we talked about this before, like how in Fire a lot of the members didn't even have uh, names put on their elemental weapons, for example. Like you told me that uh, a lot of them just had the, the, the colors, but no names put on them because they didn't want to limit them to the elemental aspects, as we know from published material. I think knowing that, you know, the power of the cup lies in its emptiness or that a, a dagger cuts or that different tools have... A much broader function understanding that would help of course in harmonizing with the particular tool wouldn't it yeah well this is, you bring up a very very interesting point here because for meditator for a start at very Royal, they gave everything out i think virtually except the cup they gave the uh, the wand out and they gave the knife out but they, they gave the disc out unpainted and i don't think they gave a cup out from memory <coughs> because at the otr hall we still had all the all the yellow knives and uh couple of the old ones were still there uh, from uh, from the golden uh, from Fairy Ra when the, when the place shut they took them over and gave them to the people in the OTR uh, they all gave out but the, the thing is that in the, in the books of uh, on the golden dawn you never see how to use these things and I was all, I, I used I used them from a martial arts viewpoint you hold something energy comes from the center of gravity out that's it simple and flows out and that way you use the uh, the at least a couple of the eight extra vessels that 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 was my basic understanding when i talked to the people who were showing me these things they had different ideas as one would expect and uh you had jack from the 1930s percy from the 1940s he had the nans from the 1950s so we ha i had a cross section that went all the way up until the up until the 60s from the 30s to the 60s of what they taught uh, you know, I, I, not only did I ask Jack, I used to ask Frank Salt. I'd get on the phone to Frank. I'd write, he'd write some letters to me that would defy description and trying to interpret. But when you spoke to him on the phone, you were in a clear, concise manner. He was very helpful. Uh, Beth, Bethany Jones, one of the former chiefs, I, I rang her up a couple of times too about certain things. But she was she was helpful as well. So um, it, so I, I managed to get a cross viewpoint, and then I applied my own interpretation to it. 
the uh, how, to, how to use these things. And I still think the idea of the old Taoist principle uh, of how it works, because in in the in magic in general, using your chakras primarily uh, as a power center, you're not using one; you're using two in tandem with each other. And by using the same chakras, by using the chakras and Taoism that you've actually got, you're starting to use the same the same thing the Golden Dawn did as far as fundamental principles. Using the uh, the sacral chakra, well, they use that for some aspects of magic, which is good enough to use within what you're doing. They don't use it for all of that, but it's just some aspects. So when you think of the Tandian, you can also, or some parts of the Tandian, you, you can see the relationship with uh, magic be exactly the same. Uh, so there's no real difference here. So that's why I've always advocated Tai Chi just as a health set. Learn off the video if you want. The difference between doing Tai Chi as a dance set and doing Tai Chi as an internal set is A, all you want to do is give your health, and B, it's where you put your thought. That's the difference in doing a yoga posture. It's where you put your thought and what you visualize within it that counts. That's the main, the main emphasis on it. Uh, but the Tai Chi set moves with swords. You can hold a... I've done a Tai Chi set holding my sword, uh, 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 my knife, even even my wand and cup, you know, and practice that to see what the results would be over a period of time. And I found them better using that Tai Chi principle as just a lead-in. So it, it doesn't have to be uh, connected to the Golden Dawn. You do it separate. But when you hold something, you do the same thing. You just got to get used to it. I, I would seriously suggest that people do a deeper study on the elemental weapons, on their use. Uh, I, I do that, of course. I'm not going to cover it here uh, on, on this. Uh, but I, I will. Um, I think that uh, people should start looking at how this thing works rather than how to make the wand and, uh, and just focus on the end result. They've got to look at the process of how the thing works and how the process works on incremental steps of each time, which yeah. means practice. A first step in the right direction, though, is to first of all realize that they're not limited to the element that they're attributed to. I mean, to understand that the cup, although it's got watery qualities, it's it's in no way limited to tracing, say, water pentagrams with it. It's it's got so much more than that. I mean, a cup in and of itself, it obviously represents a, a vast, you know, number of ideas. But uh, to, to limit it to just invoking water is to completely, I think, take out so many of its possibilities and, and as long as people do that they limit them to the elements there's not much potential there well you're right on that because the uh, one of the things that got me writing the Golden Dawn Correspondence Course was because it, I saw a discussion on a forum once about the elemental weapons and it frustrated the hell out of me because uh, none of these people had been taught by anyone within the GD and it was just a supposition it's a hypothesis and Granted, you're going to have everyone's got those, but the thought bubbles from time to time and try and act them. But there was no basis in reality, and it was a closed concept. So that got me working on my own version of it. But there was, you have to understand that at places like Furry Roll, everyone had a different viewpoint. And what you had to do was look at the different viewpoints and then try and work core principles. And where the core principles max, it was a eureka moment. So uh, the for example, uh, people are still trying to do uh, uh, pentagrams with cups and and uh, and discs uh, in your elemental weapons. Well, you don't. You never do. You never do. Uh, they're passive weapons, so you can't use that. Uh, when Pat Beeman came out to to New Zealand, we discussed this, and she was quite surprised. Even Regardi was. And, and see, they're never, never shown this sort of stuff. And this was there's certain things you do and certain things you don't. Uh, and uh, it, it's a very very difficult thing to try and explain it to someone. Uh, if all you've got to do is regard his books to go on, or e even if you get the original papers. There's a whole continuity that goes on from point A to point B and uh, on that. And um, you have to understand that different people have different ideas on this, uh, and you have to be flexible. But probably within the Golden Dawn, people try to go for your purism. This is the way of doing it, and there's no other way. Well, that's all bullshit. Uh, there was flexibility from the Golden Dawn, otherwise they wouldn't have, the SM wouldn't have changed the rituals for the better, you know, uh, which they did do in a lot of cases, in some cases for the worse, as in Bristol. But uh, generally speaking, no, um, everything evolves, nothing's static. <coughs> training, pe yeah, training people as a meditative exercise, you can't just look at a cup and wand or, or a wand and ritual and just say, go do it. 
uh, you've got to you've got to be shown how to do it. You've got the energy, you've got to flow out. And the best thing to do that, it's a meditation in itself. So we're coming back to meditation again. And the meditative exercise really that I can see best aligned to it from my limited knowledge on the subject would be a Tai Chi set uh, as, as doing it. And Tai Chi is basic. YouTube, help yourself. Uh, and uh, just put your concentrations right and it will aid you in that. It's not the only way of doing it, but you've got to move around. You can't just be still uh, uh, standing still looking at the BG mantras of lum, rum, bum, sum or, or, doing the, or doing some form of exercise. You have to move. And this is where it differs. You have to move with something. If you move with a Tai Chi set, you move as you do in ritual. Exactly the same. Even sometimes the point of concentration on the center of gravity, because uh, Nancy Hobson was once, <coughs> was a former chief of Furry Ra, people wanted to know how to move, because what they used to do was at Furry Ra, they'd tell them to walk along the cracks, you do this, do that, do the other thing. But that's all, that's all external process. The internal process, when they asked Nancy, she said, walk like an Egyptian. Well, you can imagine someone with their hands up there doing the bangles routine. Of, <laughs> I mean to say, just to be on the floor. Uh, you know, they wouldn't get off the floor for about five minutes. But what, what, what the principle behind that was, they wanted continuity from where they had an invocation to where they had to go. They wanted to know what to do in between. So you'd go from one thing, do you walk quickly? Do you walk slowly? Do you walk with solemnity? Which you do you have to understand the principles behind it and the only way to learn that apart from even when you do ritual you, it takes years and years to pick it up but the Tai Chi set helps show you how to do that because you're walking with deliberation and you're still using that same principle of center of gravity to push outwards when you're holding a wanderer sword when you're holding up a banner when you're even reading when you're reading from a from a text uh, you you do the same principle. It comes from the center, outwardly, and there, and and, and pushes out, and makes a big difference. And that's a good way of training. It's not the only way. It's just my suggestion, because I was a martial artist for 17 years before I did the Golden Dawn, and, and uh, these these elements came in. I guess a combination of that, basically uh, harmonizing with the body and the centers and how you move energy, and and of course the meditative state that comes with doing that combined with understanding, say, what the weapons are really about, as opposed to limiting them to certain functions, for example, and putting those two things together, is knowing that a cup is much more than just water, and moving with it in ritual with that kind of focus will really bring out uh, the cup as an extension of you properly used in ritual in the end. Yeah, well, uh, as, you, as you say, uh, the, the you have your elemental weapons, and then you have the, the in ritual. The temple officers, when I was asking some of them about what did they do with the temple officers, and uh, Jack used to get them down. I know Frank did something similar too, because Frank used to tell me that he, uh, Frank saw things from a very biblical viewpoint, where Jack was more of a mystical experience. Jack was more inner. Frank was still inner to a certain extent, but he had a more focus on the Christian viewpoint of things, where Jack was... Jack was just as much just as much a Christian as Frank, but he would start seeing things and imaging things, and, and it, was, it was a real holographic experience for Jack. And that much that rubbed off on me greatly because that was the direction I, I started off in India. I, I was looking at these things, so the crossover for me was almost an invisible line. It was just it was just a matter of focus points uh, as far as it goes. But that's the way. That's the way you've got to learn. Uh, you've got to learn to move the body. Moving Zen. You move the body. Uh, you've got to learn the energy in the body, and then you've got to apply that energy to what you're doing. Uh, and uh, I found that I can't find anything better than uh, that moving around than a Tai Chi set if you concentrate on the internal mechanisms. And uh, I, I would suggest to all G people to try and do it. It's not. It will. It, 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 the idea in ritual, you've got rhythm. This gives you rhythm. You won't get anywhere else. Now, if you're a dancer, you will have that as well. You'll have similar, similar abia. So if you're in the dance and you're used to doing long dance routines, you would get the similar, you'd find a similar experience because dancing is more than just doing a move. It's an experience within itself. And this is where they get to that point of uh, Zen where, they, where, where it becomes one. Skating is another one. Uh, 
<clears throat> all these things where you move, you get the experience, providing you make it a mystical experience when you do it. That, that, that's the point. And I you recall, build on it. I recall when you came out in 2006 and we did the, when we had the seminar there, and uh, at one point uh, during a, an initiation rehearsal for the neophyte, one thing you mentioned was that uh, while Rigardi showed people to go really, really fast through the circumambulation uh, of the office, uh, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, well, listening to us the idea of moving slowly and to feel the current and to really harmonize with what's being moved physically. Not you know, because it's it's one thing to conceive of these things uh, intellectually or to feel them on another level, but to actually manifest them in the way we move is a big part of it. Yeah, well, this was this was drilled into me um, uh, when when we uh, when I used to go up to uh, Hastings. And uh, they used to, we used to go down to the OTR hall where Jack would go down there in his wheelchair and I'd whack him down and the others would turn up. And uh, he had a real head of steam. You know, you couldn't catch the guy in the wheelchair on the, on the cement floor, believe me. You, take, you have to take a running start. Uh, but um, with, um, with the circumambulation, they all had slightly different ideas on... Uh, they, all, they all did the same thing at the same speed, but they had different ideas on approach. And it was interesting because when they would put me through the rituals I, I was a candidate but I wouldn't co I didn't come in blindfolded I was there watching everything and instead of blindfolding me they kept my eyes open so that I would see what's going on and uh, while they were going through this training mechanism they'd stop about every 10 minutes or five minutes or so and argue the point about what was happening and you got three or four different viewpoints so, uh, so, so, you know, just when I think, well, Jack said it was this, then Percy would pop up and say no, then Barbara and Anne would say, I don't think it's that, then Charlie, her husband, would pop in and say, ooh, you know, so between a lot, you know, I thought, well, I thought like, geez, I better take a note, better take notes. Um, but all of that related back to the circumambulations. Regardi had never seen them. He, was, he saw them 30 years ago. He wouldn't have seen them at all, I don't think, from memory. Uh, if he uh, he had no he never took the part of an officer in Bristol. Now I'm not trying to throw start, throw water on regard. He was a brilliant man. He's far cleverer than I'll ever be. But he was never shown the pertinent points. He had to work work certain things out for himself. And when he went to see Pat Beeman uh, when they were walking around the temple, uh, Pat Beeman, uh, Laura Jennings, and Peter York start the temple all together. And Rigardi turned up twice. And the only comment he ever made in ritual instruction was uh, in order to bloody funeral. Uh, so everyone would walk in a hurry, and I thought, Jesus, we're off the races. I said, Whoa, hold back! <laughs> but uh, walk with solemnity, and you'll see this. You'll see this in in religious ritual and Catholicism all over the world. They have a, a rhythm or a pace that they walk at. They don't run around. Uh, tai, chi, tai Chi speed circumambulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much so. So I was quite surprised at that. Uh, but um, Francis told me he said he was too old. He didn't teach individual bits he would show people some things get them to read a book and come back to him uh, that was the way he taught uh, and I had him at my place for a while and I communicated with him for quite a while and that's the way he taught so he'd make you find work it out for yourself uh, and uh, but Francis never never took the part of an officer he never took the part of a horror and believe me there's a big difference when you're doing the part of an officer and a part of a horror and you see different levels that you will not see if you're just reading the ritual because no, you get as far as I know, he didn't even meet other members in Bristol. I mean, he uh, he just no, he went through the initiations and, and was given papers, and pretty much that was it. So, I mean, in terms of temple experience and oral tradition, it's 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 pretty uh, skinny. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th this this is the problem. Uh, I loved old Francis. He was a great guy. We we agreed on a lot of things. We never argued that much, except on just one or two little wee things where we we initiated Pat Beeman in, uh, in, into certain things using the uh, pen. Uh, Watchtower ceremony, which is another story in itself, but I think I think though that all of this is missed in books. It's not anyone's fault. It's just that opportunity was not there. You you have to learn these things by looking at officers, talking to officers, becoming an officer, and become a horophant. You'll have the views of other people, which will shape you to look at a certain focus point. Then you'll have your own viewpoints when you go through it. But all this comes back to meditation. You, uh, people at Furry Row wanted to know during ritual when they first were an officer and if some of them, even some of them at five, six, didn't quite understand the difference when you stop at a diagram and go to another, what you did in between. Uh, see, all of this 
all of this is different incremental levels uh, and uh, it's part of the meditative experience that I find Tai Chi uh, gives uh, not better than anything else because you're moving, you're walking, you're concentrating on energy and you have rhythmic pattern. So the rhythm you get and continuity you get is from Tai Chi. But most important of all, you get a build up on it. You're able to build this over a period of time, uh, which you do not get if you're sitting down there concentrating on a yellow square, uh, which is a different thing entirely. And you learn to try and use a Tai Chi and implement it and bring it into the ritual. So you're trying to bring the rhythm you've learned and focus it in with that. Because you won't get it any other way that I that I know of. But someone someone may have great ideas. As I said, dancing and will will do it. Skating is another element where they will do it. Uh, dancing is probably the, uh, another one close to Tai Chi where you do physical movement, gymnastics. But you've got to look at you've got to look at the rhythmic pattern, and you've got to develop that rhythm, and you've got to develop it in incremental steps so you do it. And that's moving meditation. Tai Chi thing, martial arts in general, is moving Zen. But we're just looking at the, at the at the patterns to produce that internal aspect. The internal Tai Chi systems are moving Zen. And that's what you do in ritual. Ritual is moving Zen or the equivalent of. And uh, the, the, so you've got to match it up using those two elements. Hmm. I mean, unless so, so unless we implement or develop exercise within a GD to be equivalent to Tai Chi, in the end, it's uh, I guess Tai Chi is what is something you strongly recommend to GD members out there to... Uh, that they do so that they would understand how to move basically in a meditation. Well, this is, yeah, this is the simplest form of doing it. Uh, it. It's a simple exercise. It's not, you can pick the own set you do. My set is a modified Yang style, but it, it only takes me a very short time, no more than a couple of minutes a day. And uh, Tai Chi, for, for want of a better term, is Qigong. It's an element of Qigong as well, which uh, invigorates and lets things flow for your systems. So you're actually using your flow patterns or energy patterns within your body, you're expanding them to take in rituals that you use. And then you take that framework and you put it in within a GD context. By doing that, you're able to let the energy flow through and uh, incrementally build on it. You can't incrementally build on something within ritual. It's got to be continuity. It's got to be all the way, continuity and, inc and incremental steps and rhythm. All those elements come in through a, a Tai Chi base uh, as such. Uh, it's been my experience. Now all of this comes back to meditation and the golden uh, and the golden dawn. You can meditate on certain things that you go into, which is what most people do. But you've also got to meditate on as an officer. If you're an officer, you've got to look at how you learn. Now, as a candidate, you don't have to do anything except meditate, go in, and let things happen. That's essentially it. And you better have that meditation period before you go in. They were very, very insistent on that. But when as a as an officer, it's a totally different ball game. You've got to allow for the energy to flow and work within the confines and structures of the Golden Dawn ritual itself. And this is one good example. It's not the way. It's 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 a way. But the problem you've got was people tend to want purity. They want this way and no other way. That's the purest thing, and that's the worst thing you can do because it, the purity doesn't allow for change. Purity does not. Uh, you, the GD has evolved in the SM. They may uh, take the implements off the altar. They uh, sorted out the portal, which I could have done a little bit more on, incidentally, if it's where you stand. But they, they, they really worked at it and developed it. And uh, by doing that, uh, and, and, and so it's got to happen within you as what's happening without. Because everything that happens within you happens without in the ritual. So outside of the ritual is an, ex is an expression of what's happening within you. And if you understand the energy patterns and channels in your body, even from an Eastern perspective, it's a start in the right direction. If you've got a better alternative, use it. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just using one one such example. People talk about using alchemical aspects, or I can use alchemy and hold a sword, and that represents a phallus or an anthor and things like that. that's all bullshit. Um, what you what you've got to do is look at these things within context, side by side. It's got to be you as an individual who's a temple officer and what you do within that. You've got to improve yourself. And when you get to Horford, you've got to improve yourself again. You need tools to do that. You need a structure. And it's no good just doing the thing repetitively. That's that's a help. But you've got to do other things to make up. You've got to be more aware of what you're doing on the floor. You've got to be the, the important thing within the GD rituals, meditation wise, was to open themselves up so they'd be more aware of what was happening. And they had to pinpoint what was happening and focus on it. And how could they do this? Repetitive ritual? Sure, it will give it to you. 
but you still need to develop things within you. And how do you do that? Uh, the, a lot of the, the photo people are all churchgoers, and they relied on the Christian viewpoint of that. Like uh, the Archangel Michael will guide me and things like that. Well, that's that's great. Uh, that's, that's, that's one way if you can express yourself that way. But the Archangel might just not going to tell you if you stand there and you go to point from A to point B, how to hold yourself, how to work yourself, what to be aware of, what to do when you get there. Um, that's not going to come in a blinding flash. That's up to you to build up on your experience to do it. And that's through meditation of Tai Chi things, in my case. So I'm seeing it through just through my viewpoint. All right. Well, I think that about covers it. Okay, well, uh, okay, I'll chat to you uh, again. I'll see you next. Yeah, talk later. Bye.